Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the new preferences data store, which is the replacement for shared preferences because shared preferences got deprecated in the latest API version. So this is essentially just a new way of saving preferences in your app. So what we will do here, we can enter a key. So for example, Android, enter a value. Um, hey guys, for example, we can save this key. And when we now enter this key again, and we click on read, then we will simply read the value of whatever we saved under this specific key here. So if we enter something else here and click on read, then no value found. So there must be something saved here. So essentially there are two kind of versions of data store you can use. The one hand is preferences data store, which we will use here. And the other kind is Proto Data Store. So essentially, they are very similar, but Proto Data Store is also type safe. Preferences Data Store is not. But for Proto Data Store, you need to set up a lot more. You need to write your, your model, your schema in such a protobuf language. And that's, in my opinion, just a little bit too much to just save some preferences. Usually you know the type of your preferences, so you don't really need that type safety. And also usually in apps you have a room database or so implemented so that you could just save your preferences in that database if you really need that type safety. So I will show you this preferences data store here, which is very similar to shared preferences, just that it uses Kotlin flows. So everything will now happen asynchronously with shared preferences, I think reading was synchronous so there was no way to execute that on a background thread even though that should happen so this is now definitely better with data store so make sure to get this initial project here with this activity main layout and these gradle dependencies here from this video's description from my github repository here and as you can see i also just set up view binding so that we don't need to worry about that in this video because this video is about data store so to actually start that is very similar to shared preferences we essentially want to create a data store object here so that will be a private late init var data store which is of type data store and here we specify the type of data store we use the preferences data store and we need to make sure to choose this preferences from the data store library and here on create we can then assign that data store um, latent var to simply create data store that create data store function here we need to import that or oh, we don't um do we yes we do <laughs> um this is essentially just an extension function for context objects and because we're inside of an activity here that is no problem because we already refer to context here but if you would need to call that function from outside of an activity then you would need to write something like context dot create data store and here we now could pass a bunch of parameters but we essentially only want to pass a name and we also needed to do that for shared preferences. So it's very similar. So for example, just settings. You really shouldn't save any complex data here inside of data store. Um, same for shared preferences. For that, you should uh, rather use a room database. But if you have something like settings, then that is really suited well for that. And now we want to create two functions. One function to save something into our data store instance here and one function to read from it. So we will have a private suspend function here. So as I said, data store is based on Kotlin flow. So it uses coroutines to read and write data. So private suspend function save, and that will take a key. So we will save our data in key value pairs, exactly as we did for shared preferences. And we specify the value, which I choose a string here for but you can also save integers, booleans, and all that stuff. So the first thing we want to do here is we want to specify a key. So you might think we already have a key, but data store preferences uses some special kind of keys, but we can create that with our string key here. So we write val data store key, 
and that is equal to a new preferences key of type string and we pass our key here. So that will just, as you can see, create such a preferences.key, which we need to write something into our data store instance. And now we can already do that, since that is also very similar to shared preferences. We just use data store dot edit, and you can see in here we have a reference to mutable preferences. And that also is a suspend function, as you can see here at that icon. So that is executed inside of a in here, which is fine because that is a suspend function here. So in here we can now use those mutable preferences, which we can essentially give a name of settings. So settings, add our data store key, so we can just use that as if it was a map here. And we set that to our value. And that is it. That's how we write to preferences data store. And now we can do the same for our read function. We can actually just copy this save function here, paste it below, call that read. If we want to read something, we only need the key because we don't know the value yet. But this will return a string here that is nullable. So that is the value that we read from that key. And if it does not exist, we will simply return null here. And then we also need this data store key just to read from our data store. But we don't need this. Instead, we can now get the preferences. So from which we can read our actual values from data store dot data. You can see that data now returns a flow of preferences. And because that flow essentially just emits that single preferences object, we can use that first. So that will return that first emission of that flow. And that will be our preferences object from which we can now read data. So we can simply return preferences at the index of our data store key here. And as I said, this solution here with preference data store is not type safe. So we don't really know here if this is a string, if this is an integer or so. Well, we know it because we saved a string at that specific key. But this essentially just returns any. So if if this would if we would have saved an integer here at that key, but we would return a string here, then our program would simply crash here. But usually we know what we save here, and that just makes sense. So in on create then, we want to assign an on click listener to our button save. So then we want to essentially save the data from our two edit texts to data store, so the key and the value. And because we need to execute that from a coroutine, we want to launch that in lifecycle scope. So in here, we call save. Um, the key is binding.et save key dot text dot to string. And the value is et save value dot text dot to string. So that's it how we save something. And now we want to assign an on click listener to our button read. Also launch a coroutine here. And here we want to simply set the text of our TV read value to whatever we essentially got from this read function. So we could save that in a variable here. Val value is equal to read. We want to read what at the key whatever is in binding dot et read key dot text dot to string and then we can set the text here to value and if that is null we set it to no value found and that is it we can now launch our app take a look here we can enter a key hello what is up? We click on save. We enter the key again. And click on read and we get what is up. And even if we close the app and open it again here, 
then we can still access the data we saved at that key. So if we now enter hello again, click on read, then you can see we get what is up again. So if you really like this video, please give it a like, comment below if you will use this data store in future in your project and also hit the subscribe button and don't miss out on regular Android tutorials every second day. If you're interested in more advanced Android courses, then check out the first link in this video description There you will get to my website. And since today is Black Friday, there is still an offer going where you get two of my premium courses in a bundle for the price of only one. So if I upload this video, this should last 12 more hours and then the offer will be gone. So just check it out and see if it is something for you. Have an awesome day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.